All right, g'day guys, it's Bruno here, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about an update to Explosive Arrow Ballista Elementalist that we that we all love to play um, for 3.21. So there has been a few different changes, and I'm gonna go talk about, um, run through that now. So this build has been uh, extremely popular for the last year. In fact, it's um, it's been one of the most popular builds uh, on the PLE forums for uh, the last year and even as you can see here so um, my explosive arrow blister elementalist um, still up there with the most popular builds on the PLE forums uh, and has been uh, for the last um, since 3.17 and so this is basically an update to that given the changes that we have and so there has been a few different things. So I'm gonna walk you through, firstly, a bit of the uh, mechanics of this build and a bit of gameplay so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna then take you through the changes and what to look out for with those changes. Um, talk about leveling and how that has changed, uh, just uh, ever so slightly. Some things to watch out for and talk about the fuse formula as well. So for those that are well versed in this, uh, in this build, uh, you probably wanna skip through to the changes probably and perhaps the leveling as well. Um, and those that haven't played this build before, you're in for a ride because this build is the build that I think just, in, in my opinion, hasn't been topped in terms of an all-round build that can take you from league start through to end game. And I'm talking about demolishing uber bosses with this thing and you get to league start with it. And so this is the kind of build that I love to play. Uh, when it comes to a league, I typically only play one build, build a league. So I wanna make sure that my league starter can take me all the way through the game doing all content up to doing uber bosses. And in fact, with this character that I'm about to show you, uh, which is uh, my Sentinel League character um, from a couple of leagues back. Um, I was actually doing Uber Boss carries with this. That this is how powerful um, the the build is, and um, and so I don't think there's been another build that provides the balance and the all roundedness that Explosive Arrow Blister does, and it still does today. So it provides uh, obviously great early game. It provides great end game. So it scales very well but it gives you um, great DPS, so we can reach the Ignite cap, which is the most damage over time that you can do with an Ignite build. Uh, we also have great defense as well, so we can get over 100,000 effective hit points with this build, depending on how, how much DPS you wanna put into it, how much defense you wanna go for, but it is very, very strong in that regard, and also very fast as well. The gameplay is quite fast with one catch. So the downside to this build is because it is a damage over time build, it is a ballista build, is the fact, and the fact that we're using explosive arrow, which has a delay in itself, means that you might have to backtrack a little bit when it comes to picking up loot. So if you're hearing a chaos orb drop behind you, your loot filter goes off, you know, you might have to backtrack for a couple seconds to pick it up and continue going. Literally, in my opinion, that's the only downside to this whole build. Uh, but obviously, again, it, it comes down to your own preference and play style as well. But first, let's jump into it, and I'll show you exactly what this build does. So, as I mentioned, this is a build from uh, Sentinel League. I can run a Strand map, or I can do a Minotaur. May as well do a bit of a, a Minotaur, so you can see what it looks like. Um, so I don't have Grace up at the moment, just with changes that have happened over the last couple of leagues. Um, the, the build is not as great as it was when it was first min-maxed a couple of leagues back, but it gives you a flavor of what this is all about. So basically, what you wanna come in and do is you pop your flasks and you just you just drop totem bombs. So basically, you, you just, every, every few meters, you just drop a totem bomb. So as you can see there, everything just around you just simply dies. So you run, run into a pack, drop a totem bomb, keep running through, phase through, Drop a bottom, keep your flasks up, keep quicksilvering through, and you just go flying through absolute everybody. So it's hard to get a build that's actually faster than this because we're literally just running the whole time. That's that's all we do. We just run. Even even builds like Tornado Shot. Most Tornado Shot players that I see go far slower than this because they spend their time standing still shooting away. We just phase through, we get great movement speed, and we just run. It's what we do. We just drop a totem bomb, we run, and we've got great proliferation as well. 
And so the Ignite proliferation just absolutely destroys content. And so, so as you can see, like you come back here and everything is just dead. Everything is just dead. I probably didn't put down enough because um, there's still a number of monsters that are still alive. But as you can see here, you got a bit delayed for the damage, but once the damage kicks in, it just absolutely destroys the boss. So that's just a little bit of a showcase as to what the gameplay is all about. Now let's jump into uh, a little bit of the mechanics first and foremost for those that are relatively new to the build. So the way that explosive arrow works is you shoot an arrow into an object and you can see there's a delay and you can change that delay based on skill effect duration but what we want to really do and the powerful thing with using this with ballistas is that these are called fuses right but these fuses stack so if you're going up against maven for example you can you can stack up to 20 of these fuses into Maven and they will and they will uh, compound the damage. So for example, if I'm shooting explosive arrow just by myself, over a period of a, a second or so before they explode, so you can see it takes about one second, one and a half seconds for it to explode. With one fuse, I can do a little bit of damage, but I can stack up to six, just me personally, which compounds the damage. But we can stack up to 20 according to the explosive arrow gems skill gem. But we can't do that ourselves. So the way that we do that is we apply explosive arrows through our ballistas. And so we can get down six ballistas. So when you can get six ballistas or shooting at least five arrows a second, not even, four arrows a second, then you're, you're going to be hitting the 20, the 20 fuse cap. And so you can see, you can imagine 20 of these going into a boss. It waits a second. They all go and do a huge explosion at the same time. And that damage is absolutely insane. So it absolutely destroys bosses. It's one of the best bosses in the game, in my opinion. Um, and you can go back through some of my videos from Sentinel League and you can see some of the gameplay and some of the, the uber mavens and uber bosses uh, that I was doing there, including some carries as well. Um, absolutely insane. So now let's jump into some of the changes. So the first big change is mana reservation. So it has become a little bit harder to reserve uh, all of our auras. And so the way that we can deal with this is to... So what we had here previously in the evasion mastery was a, a mastery that gave us 25% increased mana reservation efficiency of grace. Now, that's actually huge, you know, 25% increased mana reservation of one of our skills. So unfortunately, that has been taken away from us. My recommendation is to simply change that over to, um, uh, to increasing your spell suppression chance, which is a great node if we have uh, an equipped helmet, body armor, gloves, boots, all with evasion rating, which should be relatively easy for us to do on this build. Um, that just gives us an extra 15% spell suppression, which uh, comes in very, very handy. But the way that we deal with the mana reservation, uh, it, which, which is what I'm recommending, is simply this. To get a small cluster jewel, which gives you 6% increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. So you get an extra 6% here, 6% on the second one. And then for, the, um, for the, the major stone here is just choose one of your auras that you use. So you can use determination here, you can use grace or malevol malevolence. Um, and get one that has a 50% increased mana of reservation efficiency. So you can simply choose your small cluster or whatever, choose, uh, whatever which one you like. Um, basically, it will come down to whatever's cheaper because they're the three auras that we will predominantly be using is grace, determination, malevolence when it comes to end game uh, and defiance banner as well. And that will enable you to um, still have mana left over. And so if I go through these stats and these configurations, this configuration for 3.21 based on the new skill tree, what you can see here, if I, I go back to pinnacle bosses in our setup, we're at the ignite cap of 36 million DPS, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, an attack rate of roughly three. My hit chance here is 88, but that's totally fine because we're getting skill duration as well and we're still hitting our 20 fuses. 
Um, and you can see here an effective hit pull of 120,000, um, which is just super, super tanky. Super tanky for a build that does this much damage. Um, we've also got a uh, life of 3,800 um, with a life regen of 350 as well, which is, which is great. Again, just quality of life. Um, then our uh, further defenses, evasion chance, 73, physical damage reduction, 77, spell suppression chance, 100, chaos resistance, 56, movement speed modifier, 180%. Um, absolutely ridiculous. And so... Uh, and this and this setup is not even what I just showcased as well and what I was running in Sentinel. I actually had a better bow uh, in Sentinel League. You can run with Mage Blood, which is the ultimate end game item, which um, just increases it even further. So, for example, my hit chance just goes up. Um, you get a lot more speed with that as well. It's you know it's just fantastic running with a Mage Blood when you can fit it in. And you can also at end game run Divergent Explosive Arrow, which enables you to get up to 24 fuses to further increase your DPS, which is really useful if you want to be farming Uber uh, Pinnacle bosses. So with this setup that I've got here, as you can see, my Uber Pinnacle boss DPS is roughly 13 million DPS, which is still absolutely huge. Um, but you, you can get up to, you can get even more with uh, a better bow, um, a, a few little upgrades. And you can see here, my skill tree is actually only level 92 as well. So you can th throw in an extra eight points as you wish, basically. So it's a really flexible build, um, really flexible skill tree as well. And so, um, and, and that's a, the other great thing about this build. So feel free to play around with these uh, numbers and your, your own gear as well. Uh, to plug it in and plug and play because the other thing I've done with this tree is I've actually made it a little bit more defensive um, so you can for example uh, spec out of Bastion of Elements as a, a defensive ascendancy and instead go for Shaper of Storms um, and that alone look increases your DPS by uh, 2 million which is um, quite significant so that's an extra uh, you know like 12 to 13 percent increase more damage um, but my ultimate uh, goal is go defenses first. You want to make sure you're comfortable defensively, and then just pack on the uh, pack on the DPS. So that's how we solve solve mana reservation first and foremost. Now, secondly, is the fire mastery. The fire mastery has actually changed. So previously, for this mastery, we got uh, twenty percent increased fire damage over time multiplier, which is which is huge. It came at a cost of minus 30% fire resist. So that downside is now gone, which is fantastic. Um, so what basically the, the downside's gone, but we lose a bit of DPS. So it's not a major deal. Um, the way that we change this is simply to the new fire mastery being fire exposure you inflict applies an extra minus 5% to fire resistance. So basically we're reducing the enemy resistance by a further 5%, uh, increasing our own damage. Another thing to explore with this build, which could, could actually be really good, um, I, I'd have to try, uh, but is this one here, which is burning enemies you kill have a 3% chance to explode, dealing a tenth of their maximum life as fire damage. This, again, could be great when it comes to clear speed. Uh, you know, when you're at super end game, like what I was just showing you with my build, we don't need something like this because our proliferation is already so high that we don't need to enhance our clear speed anymore because we're already flying through packs. So you probably don't need this then. But this, this could be really handy potentially in leveling um, and potentially in early maps and as you're completing your atlas. Uh, I'm not quite sure. So it's something just to, to consider as you're going through uh, your run in 3.21 and just test it out. Look, it's one, it's one passive point. Uh, you'll pick up some refund points um, as you as you progress. So feel free to, free to play around with it and see what you prefer, which is uh, this node here giving you the chance to explode or just a simple flat uh, minus 5% to fire resistance in terms of giving that to them. So that's for the fire mastery. And then we've got wand leveling changes as well. So previously we had... Um, so we were able to use the, the wand crafting recipe, which enabled us to add extra flat damage onto our wands, which is huge for leveling. Really, really helps. So um, the changes aren't too bad when it comes to uh, the new patch contents. 
um, the, the patch notes. Because with the new ones, instead of giving, getting increased spell damage, damage, we are actually getting already, as our implicit modifiers, we are getting added damage, flat damage on there. So it's not too much of a, a downside there. So leveling should still be okay and um, and quite good with these uh, without use without having to use the wand vendor recipe and just simply using what's given to us uh, on the actual drops of the wands themselves with the flat damage there. And what you can do as well, you can pick up um, if you find an essence as well. Feel free to throw a couple of essences on them and you can pick up some flat damage on top of what you've already got here as an implicit. So that is um, really, really good for us. Um, and then obviously weapon trees. So this is something that's it's, it's unexplored for us. And so I'm super excited about what the potentials are for this build. Um, I mean, this build is already absolutely amazing. And I think this could, you know, we could be able to do some really funky things with um, the weapon trees. So I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what kind of nodes they're going to be uh, available on these trees. But there might be some pretty funky things that we can we can play around with here. So again, this is just a buff, uh, another buff to the build. All right, so let's talk about leveling in a little bit more detail. Um, this POB will be linked for you and all the, all the uh, steps are here by act. So you've got your skill tree by act. Um, we kind of we start by parthing up. We in initially go to the first fire mastery and heart of flame up top to increase our uh, fire damage originally, because we will be using holy flame totem and purifying 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 flame um, uh, early on in the game uh, before we swap over to explosive arrow. So we will be doing fire damage predominantly as our main skill. Um, and then it's roughly about Act 5, so once you hit uh, level 38 is when you want to be thinking about changing over to Explosive Arrow. And then basically Explosive Arrow will, con will take you, uh, will carry you for the whole game. Um, one thing I just want to point out when it comes to, um, when it comes to the skill tree is my recommendation is always prioritise defence first. So really prioritize defense up until you get to, basically you've completed your, your atlas and you're up to like into the 90s when it comes to your leveling. So the first thing you want is you want to path over to this right side of the tree down here next to the ranger. Why? Because it gives you great uh, life first and foremost with these no nodes like Heart of Oak. Um, but then also you get great spell suppression as well. So you've got quick step here, which gives you spell suppression. Um, you've got another one here, intuition. And you've also got a, got a few great uh, bow, uh, bow uh, nodes here too, such as ballistics for dexterity, projectile speed and damage. You've got another one here, aspect of the evil, eagle, which is great for DPS and attack speed. Um, you've got some more life when it comes to herbalism. Uh, but also, you, you might not have the currency to anoint your amulet, and so, and you, and you you don't want to be just kind of throwing away anoints as well. And um, so, my recommendation is to spec down into watchtowers, which gives us an extra uh, summoned ballista totem, which is which is absolutely fantastic. And then only when you've got the currency and you're you're ready to respec. Then, um, then we go into the end game tree. So kind of keep this until you feel comfortable and you've got a bit of currency. And then, and then what we do is we respec all of that and we go into clusters. So you can see here there's no clusters here when we're talking about maps. Um, but when you get to the end game tree, all of that on the right hand side of the tree gets respec. And then we, we move into clusters for the extra DPS. Um, and, and by this stage, we have defenses in other areas, uh, like predominantly from gear, which can really, really, which will really, really help us. And we won't need that spell suppression from the tree. Um, and so that's basically it from, from the leveling point of view. If you are having any issues when it comes to running your auras, when it comes to leveling, I can recommend simply next to the tree on your way pathing down through here, you can pick up a mana mastery, which gives you a 12% increased mana reservation efficiency of skills, which can really, really help. So um, don't be afraid to pick that up. It's, uh, it is four, four skill points, um, but I if you need it to equip any of the auras, um, and if those auras help you, don't be afraid to pick it up by all, by all means. 
There are uh, detailed notes here as well in terms of what gems to do at what levels. So we start off by, we, by using freezing pulse uh, at the very, very start. From level four, we start using purifying, uh, I can't even say that word, purifying um, fine flame um, with a couple supports with uh, holy flame, flame totem and flame wall as well. Um, then we got a, a couple auras and heralds to support that flammability. When we get to level 28 and we do the Fixture of Fate quest, which is the library in Act 3, you want to purchase up, purchase some gems so you can start leveling, leveling them. And then when it gets to level 38, this is uh, the transition point where you can start to use Explosive Arrow and really kind of get into the, the swing of things and the swing of the build. My recommendation is to not transition unless you have a four-link uh, four link bow. And... Um, Ideally, you'd want to purchase a Storm Cloud and a Skirmish. Uh, so the Skirmish gives you an extra totem as well. Um, and you want to make sure you have your first Ascendancy by this point as well, which makes sure that every hit that we... Um, Shaper of Flames makes uh, our Ascendancy down here. Shaper of Flames, our first Ascendancy, makes sure that every hit that we does ignites our enemies, which just adds huge damage. So we've got Ascendancy Order here. My recommendation is to first and foremost go Bastion of Elements for your final Ascendancy until you get to uh, very late game and you're feeling very comfortable with your defenses and you want to start maximizing DPS, then sure, feel free to uh, spec into Shaper of Storms. I've got a few uh, good leveling uniques here um, that I can recommend. The main ones being the first two, Storm Cloud and Skirmish. They're really, really essential for the build and the leveling experience with some 3.20 prices um, and if you want to stay updated as well uh, with the build so uh, there is a, a build guide on this you can subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, you can follow me through on Twitch where I'll be probably be running this build so I haven't quite decided if I'm going to be running this build yet or not in 3.21 because I mean I have done it three times already um, or four times yeah four times already so I might mix it up and do something different, but I, I can't see myself doing a build that's going to be as good as this. So this is still the number one build in the game, in my opinion, for uh, all-rounder, as I mentioned at the start. But I might mix up things up and, and do something different. Who knows? Um, or I might be doing this build uh, to see, just to kind of just play around with a new weapon skill tree and see what we can do. Um, but the forum guide as well is is great. There's great discussion going on in there, and there always has been for, for the last year or so. So it, it, when you go to that, you can see um, it's got a detailed, uh, detailed section there with various videos that you can watch as well. Uh, we've got 271 pages of discussion. I'm not expecting you to read them all, uh, but feel free to post any questions in there. I, uh, I answer that or post questions on the YouTube video, but it's great, you know, other people chip in and uh, share their two cents as well. Um, it's a great place to kind of get some feedback and um, discuss some improvements about the build, which there might be in 3.21, considering uh, there's a lot of new stuff to be excited about. So, and a couple watch outs for this build I do just want to mention for those that are new to the build. First and foremost, do not get any added fire damage to attacks on any piece of gear. The reason being is that we use a keystone called Elemental Equilibrium. Um, and what that does is, is hits that deal elemental damage, remove exposure to those elements and inflict inflict exposure to other elements and exposure inflicted this way applies minus 25% to resistances so basically if you're if you're hitting somebody with fire damage you're going to be increasing the resistance of the enemy by um, uh, of, um, of, their, of their fire damage and so what you want to do is basically do the opposite of that. You want to inflict cold damage or lightning damage on an enemy because what that would do is then um, apply minus 25% resistance to the, en uh, to the enemy. So an absolutely huge damage multiplier to, uh, to the build. So don't have any added fire damage to your gear. Just make sure you have um, uh, somewhere on your gear added cold damage or added lightning damage. It's important that you have at least one of those two because that will give you then the elemental equilibrium. It will then apply a minus 25% minus exposure to uh, fire resistance. Super, super important. Okay, um, another watch out is do not get any pierce 
chain or fork on your gear because the way that explosive arrow works, as I showed before, um, your arrow just simply sticks into... Oh, wait, let me just show you again. I don't want to destroy that. So your arrow sticks into... Sticks into a wall like that. Whereas if you've got pierce, fork or chain, it's not going to stick into an enemy. It's going to keep bouncing around. And we want to stack as many fuses as we can into an enemy. So we just want it to stick. So don't have any pierce, fork or chain. Otherwise, it's going to completely brick your build. Um, another thing is to make sure you're aiming for a 100% chance to hit. So making sure you're getting your accuracy up. And you want to aim for a high attack speed... Um, uh, set up so roughly at least 2.5 attacks per second so if you go back into the POB you can see these here uh, with this with the end game setup that I have here we've got an attack rate of 2.99 and a hit chance of 85 so this hit chance of 85 is quite low um, but it's okay because uh, we make up for it with skill duration here so so to wait the way to work out how many fuses you have hitting an enemy at any point in time is by using this formula down here. It's your number of totems times your attacks per second times your hit chance times your skill effect duration. So an example of that would be we have six totems on average. Uh, we're hitting at 2.5 attacks per second. And you can see here I, my build is actually doing 2.99. Um, the example here is showing 97% hit chance. My POB over here is showing 85. Um, and a skill duration of 1.2, whereas my skill duration in my POB is 1.5. And this will give, uh, according to this uh, example, a, um, a, f a total of fuses of 17.46. So you can simply, uh, if you come into here, you can update this to say, okay, I'm hitting 17 fuses, so I'm doing roughly 10 million uh, DPS against Uber Pinnacle bosses. Um, but then if you jump that back to uh, just general pinnacle bosses, you can see pretty much at the cap, even just with 17 fuses with this gear, which is pretty insane. Um, so that's basically how you do it. And that's, that's all you need to worry about um, is the, the fuses. And so you can just, you can tweak any one of these variables, increase the totems, increase your attack speed, increase your hit chance or increase your skill effect duration. The only downside um, in this formula that you need to be wary of is the skill effect duration because obviously the more you increase that skill effect dura duration, the longer it's going to take for the fuses to go off. And so it kind of just slows down your clear speed a little bit. Um, it just kind of makes it feel a little bit more clunky because you're kind of hitting and then waiting and then, and then enemies are dying. Uh, so you want to speed up that process as, as best as you can. The kind of sweet spot for skill effect duration is about... 1.25 to 1.5 uh, skill effect duration. If you're going above 1.5, um, then yeah, it, it's going to start slowing down your gameplay um, a little bit. So I'm right on the, the, the cusp here at 1.55 skill effect duration. And that's simply coming from a 20% uh, quality explosive arrow gem and using um, a, a malevolence aura as well and getting increased effect on that aura, uh, which, which gives us an extra 52% um, skill effect duration, taking it to 1.52. Um, so that's basically it for, for the build. Um, don't think there's anything else. If there is, feel free to leave a question in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video um, and follow along as well so you can stay up to date with, um, with updates to the build because I'm sure we're going to be exploring and, and testing out quite a lot in 3.21. And um, like I mentioned, I'm not 100% sure whether I'll be running this build again, um, but most likely I will be. So feel free to subscribe on um, and follow on Twitch and we can uh, chat there, but also follow along on the forum uh, thread as well. Whatever tickles your fancy. And uh, so hopefully this build helps. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Until then, over and out, good luck and enjoy your experience in 3.21.